Yes, you read the title correctly. This $5 pulled pork meal prep includes not one, but two sandwiches and some of the creamiest mac in all of the land. This meal prep takes minimal work, is packed with flavor, and just takes a few minutes to heat up whenever you need a meal. Let's get into it. We will start with the star of the show, pork tenderloin. Not only does pork tenderloin have incredible macros, but also, as the name suggests, is a very tender piece of meat when cooked correctly. This is a two and a half pound package which is available in most grocery stores that I have been to. Just make sure you don't get one that has already been pre-marinated. There is some juice we want to let drain, so let's open this up over the sink. Each pack comes with two pieces of tenderloin, and what we want to do is pat both of these dry with paper towels. There we f***ing go. This will allow us to brown the exterior of the meat for extra flavor, and since we are using a lower fat piece of meat, we will take every opportunity that we can to build flavor. Once dry, put them in a large bowl and bring them back to our work surface. My cooking vessel today will be a Ninja Foodi, but you don't need one to make this recipe. The only advantage of the Ninja Foodi is that I can saute and slow cook all in one pot. If you have a slow cooker in a pan, you will get the exact same result. I will turn the foodie on the saute slash sear setting and while this is heating up, let's get our vegetables chopped. Before I get lambasted in the comment section, no. This is not authentic pulled pork. However, the vegetables will not only add some volume and fiber to the meal, but will also add a ton of flavor. Let's start with a large onion. Cut it in half, root to stem, and chop off about an inch from the stem. Peel back a couple layers of the onion, point the knife towards the root, and slice the onion every quarter inch from edge to edge, as close to the root as possible. Then push the knife halfway into the onion at two or three different heights with the knife slightly angled downwards. Finish cutting the onion by going stem to root every quarter inch or so. We only need half of an onion for this recipe, or about 196 grams, so you could put the other half in the fridge and save it for another meal. Next, let's chop up a bell pepper. You can use the color of your choice here, but I prefer a red pepper for a nice pop of sweetness. Dicing this isn't so technical, just chop the top off, pull out the white part along with the seeds, and cut pieces that are similar in size to the onion. Personally, I cut them into long thin strips and cut those strips into cubes, but do whatever you gotta do here. Lastly, I am going to mince 15 grams of fresh garlic through my press into a small bowl. The surface of the pot should be ready for our pork, so let's pour in 10 grams of avocado oil. Take each piece of tenderloin and pat it dry one last time to ensure we get a good browning on the meat. This first tenderloin has a sheath of fat that was overkill, so I simply peeled it off and then placed it in the pot, followed by the other piece. In the meantime, let's get our dry rubber spice blend prepped. Into a large bowl, add 16 grams salt, 4 grams black pepper, 8 grams smoked paprika, 5 grams mustard powder, 5 grams cumin, and 50 grams brown sugar swerve. Mix them to combine. Since we aren't preparing our pulled pork on a smoker, the smoked paprika will provide some necessary smoky flavor, while the swerve adds another profile of sweetness alongside the red pepper. At this point, the tenderloin should be browned on one side. Ooh, and you see that brown stuff stuck to the bottom of the pan? That's flavor, baby. Sorry. This kind of stuff gets me excited. Let's take the meat and add it to the large bowl of seasonings. Typically, I would brown both sides of the meat, but since we are slow cooking, I want the seasoning to act as a dry brine through the raw top side of the meat while it cooks. This way, we get the best of both worlds. Before we mess with our meat, let's add the onions and peppers to the pot. We want to use our spatula to not only mix the veggies with the oil, but more importantly, to pick up all that brown good good sticking to the bottom of the pot. You can already see the flavor infused into the veggies, and they haven't even gotten a chance to saute yet. Sauteing the veggies are going to add another layer of flavor, and we have built up at least three layers already, so you know this dish will be unbelievably delicious once finished. There's also 130 unbelievably delicious recipes in my cookbook. From meal preps, to pizzas, to ice cream, to pancakes, I have you covered. Get recipes before anyone else and get to your fitness goals like I did, as well as many others have as well, by clicking the link in the pinned comment and using code E4CM for 10% off the cookbook.
While the veggies saute for a couple of minutes, we'll get the meat covered with the seasoning mix. Make sure to really press the seasonings into the meat to infuse as much flavor directly into the meat as possible. Let's grab a measuring cup, put it on a scale, and add 90 grams water, 60 grams apple cider vinegar, and 45 grams Worcestershire shosh. The onions are translucent, so now is a good time to add our garlic into the mix and give everything a stir. Once the room smells like the house of garlic, add our liquid in and mix everything together one last time. Now we will add in the seasoned pork tenderloin with the brown side touching the pot and add any extra seasoning still in the bowl as well. If you don't have a foodie, everything we have done so far could have been done in a pot on medium heat and would have just gotten transferred to the slow cooker. You can also add the veggies and pork straight into the slow cooker without sautéing or searing, but you will lose out on quite a bit of flavor by doing so. Spending the extra 10 minutes to sauté everything is well worth it for a meal you will be eating every day of the week, especially when it is the only part of the recipe where you need to do any work at all anyways. This is easy as f We'll change settings to slow cook, let the pot cool down for 5 minutes, and then close the lid. We'll cook this on low for 8 to 10 hours, although you can cook this on high for 5 to 6 hours instead. Use this time to play with your dog, clean the house, run errands, take a shower, take a nap, and utilize some of the world's best pre-workout and go to the gym to build some muscle and get a fantastic workout in while getting one step closer to becoming a man dime. Code E4CM will save you 10% off your order. It has been 8 hours and this is a good time to check on our meat. If our fork goes through easily, we know it's done. I am getting some resistance, so I will check back every half hour until it is finished. It has been a full 10 hours and the fork is sliding in like butter, so let's quickly make our mac. This will be done start to finish in less than 15 minutes. Similar to the pork, all we need is one pot, so we'll get that pot on a scale and add 460 grams water, 240 grams high protein milk, 224 grams small shell pot. <sighs> Mother. 4 grams of salt. If you don't mind the slight drop in protein, you can use a regular fat-free milk here as well and can make up for the protein by using a higher protein noodle option like Berea Protein Plus. I personally prefer a real flour-based noodle with the more expensive milk, but you can't go wrong either way. Mix the pot up, making sure to cover the noodles as much as possible, put it on the stove top, and crank it up to high heat. While that starts cooking, set a timer for 10 minutes and let's get our cheese prepped. While I have a child while I have childhood memories of pouring parmesan in my mouth straight from the pretty green bottle, the depth of flavor you get from the real thing just isn't comparable. Since the cheap stuff doesn't melt very well and the sole focus of this dish is to have a velvety smooth mac that smacks your taste buds, I am going to shred 15 grams of the more expensive parmigiano reggiano. In the same bowl, add 84 grams of fat-free cheddar and 10 grams of cornstarch and thoroughly mix together. This mac and cheese will have a lot of leftover liquid once cooked, meaning we need an assistant to help thicken up our mac. Cornstarch will do just that, and we need very little of it, making it a no-brainer. Mixing it with the cheese will help spread it out and prevent clumps or a grainy mouthfeel in the final product. Checking back on our mac, it is starting to simmer, and this is a good time to give it a stir. The last thing we need to do is get the sharp cheddar Velveeta slices ready, and for this recipe, we need five. Unwrap them and make sure you stir the pot more frequently as the pot gets increasingly hotter. Once the timer goes off, remove the pot from the heat and immediately add the Velveeta. We not only need the mixture to cool down, but the Velveeta to melt as well. After the Velveeta is fully mixed in, add the cheese and cornstarch mixture and start stirring ASAP. We want to make sure the cornstarch doesn't cause the cheese to become grainy, so from here on out we will stir constantly for 2-3 to three minutes. It may look thin or watery at first, but as the mac and cheese cools it will start to thicken up, especially after it sits for a couple minutes. That's fucking creamy. Get that noise. Once the mac and cheese looks like this, I will let it cool for 2-3 to three minutes, the perfect amount of time to shred our pulled pork. I will keep all of the juices in the pot and only remove the pulled pork. As you can see, it is already falling apart. To turn this from pork tenderloin to pulled pork, all we need is two forks. The fork should easily slide into the meat and pull apart. Once finished, you will notice the pieces of pork are pretty long, so I prefer to take a knife and give the meat a quick rough chop 
Give the meat a rough chop so the meat sits perfectly on the buns we will use for our sandwiches. Before adding the pork back in, I like to make a smooth sauce. Now playing transparency by two chains. Where's the playing, bitch? Huh, this is gonna really piss me off. So hard to reach. Let's add everything from the pot into a high-sided container, use an immersion blender to mix. This is God's juice right here, baby. And add it back to the pot along with the pulled pork and cover it with the sauce. With everything prepped, it's the perfect time to lay out our meal prep containers and we will need six of them. <laughs> Don't mind my inconsistent containers as I only have five of the ones I use on a regular basis. Each container will get about 200 grams pulled pork and 160 grams of mac and cheese. Honestly though, these numbers will vary based on your slow cooker or stove top, but this should get you in the general range. Also, feel free to eyeball this like I'm doing if you're going to eat all these meal preps anyways, since the calories will be the same at the end of the week. Throw the meal preps in the fridge and when ready to eat, take the top off, cover with a wet paper towel, and microwave for one minute. Give both the pork and mac a stir and add 5 to 10 grams of fat free milk to the mac and cheese. The mac is so creamy that it likes to stick together and the milk will give it that lube to break everything up and make it extra creamy again. Load it back into the microwave for another minute, mix one more time, and check for desired temperature. With my microwave, I need about another 30 seconds, so I'll throw it back in one more time. Place the pulled pork on two toasted, low-calorie buns, for this I am using Keto Culture's 50-calorie buns, and add 20 grams of some no-sugar-added barbecue sauce to each one. I think Sweet Baby Ray's is the goat, but any low-calorie barbecue sauce will work. And in just minutes, you have two sandwiches and real mac and cheese to feast upon all week. If you are feeling really freaky deaky, you can put the mac and cheese on each pulled pork sandwich and be wondering to yourself, Holy f why haven't I done this before? At 600 calories and 71 grams of protein, this will fit into anyone's diet and have you bragging to your friends about what you ate for dinner all week while eviscerating fat off your body. And you could easily make this near 500 calories by making this a barbecue bowl and leaving out the buns and possibly even turning this into a barbecue pork mac. The possibilities are endless. Kind of like dessert choices after you're done eating this meal prep. And in this video here, I show you how to make pints of ice cream for 150 calories that are loaded with our favorite childhood cereals. Come join me so we can cream together. Until next time. Deuces.